Steve James is with us now. Hi, Dr. James. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Why did you feel it necessary to, to challenge the health secretary in that way? Uh, it was an opportunity I think hundreds of thousands of people would have liked to have taken. Um, it was simply there in front of me and uh, I chose to speak my mind. Uh, why do you not want to have a jab? Um, I never felt I would need to be vaccinated. Uh, I always thought that healthy people wouldn't have even be offered uh, the vaccine. It was going to go for vulnerable people. Um, I've never seen someone who's fit and well um, on intensive care. Uh, I know I know some people have had serious problems from COVID who've been otherwise well. Um, and I assumed that it would be offered to uh, adults, um, but never sort of given a message that everybody should take it and certainly not for healthy children. Is it not the social responsibility of healthy people to look after those who aren't? I believe it's the, it's the social responsibility of healthy people to get natural immunity. I think it's much, much uh, historically much more likely to be long lasting than a vaccine induced immunity. And I think studies are bearing that out now. But if they've contracted COVID, they could pass it on in that period of time that they potentially wouldn't have to the same extent if they had had a vaccination is the suggestion from the NHS. Well, it's the suggestion. And there's some data showing that with Delta, there was some reduction for a few months uh, in the ability to transmit it. But you've got to remember one very key thing, asymptomatic transmission is a uh, idea that came from computer model generation. It's not real world data. So if you're sick and you stay away from other people, you won't transmit it. What about if you don't know if you've got it? Well, if you haven't got any symptoms, you're not transmitting it. OK, so you can't transmit COVID even though you don't have any symptoms, because, again, that's not what we've been but told. If, if you're pre-symptomatic, so no, no, sorry, let me correct myself there. So if you're about to get symptoms but don't recognise it, that's possible. But in that tiny little window, we haven't got evidence showing that, at least not in a healthcare setting, that makes a difference. We know that in household contacts with Delta, recent uh, immunisation reduces that. But we haven't compared people who were previously exposed versus those who weren't exposed to corona, who had vaccines, who didn't have vaccines. And we certainly never tested it in a hospital setting. But as, as you point out there, Dr. Quite often, you don't know you've got it until you've done the test. No, I didn't say that. Um, I said that most of the time, um, you, when you have got symptoms, that's when you're transmitting. And when you haven't got symptoms, you're not transmitting. And there's a very small window where you're pre-symptomatic and go on. So if you, if you don't go on to get symptoms and you tested positive, you're not transmitting it. No, but you could have had, I don't know, runny nose, whatever the symptoms were when you had um, Omicron and, and certainly uh, when, it be, when it was the Delta variant. You don't know you've got it at that stage until you've done your lateral flow and then uh, confirmed by your PCR test. So in that window, you can infect other people, including the elderly. Yes, you, you can pass it on. But we know that with Omicron, it's very clear that that doesn't happen, that the vaccine doesn't protect you from onward transmission. We also know that it, with Delta, the transmission was only reduced for a few months post-vaccine. And we also know that that's not comparing people who've got natural immunity versus people who hadn't got natural immunity and got the vaccination. This is what the NHS say. Research has shown the vaccines help reduce your risk of getting seriously ill or dying from COVID-19, reduce your risk of catching or spreading COVID-19 and protect against COVID-19 variants. Yes, that's correct. And that's based on the Delta information and comparing people who were vaccinated versus unvaccinated, not looking at people who've already got immunity. So that's not why that's not applicable enough data to the whole of the NHS staff. And it's not relevant to Omicron. And you will not be having a COVID vaccination under any circumstances? I will not be having a COVID vaccination, not unless the entire landscape of COVID and the vaccine changes. And, you know, vaccine mandates are wrong. Mm. Um, yeah, just, just to put it to you finally before I let you go, our resident doc, our resident GP said that you are being selfish. OK. I think 100,000 other people uh, in the NHS think that we're speaking our mind because we do not want to be coerced into having a vaccine, a vaccine that's still uh, in experimental trial stages a vaccine that's got uh, side effects that are not really clearly talked about at present and people are concerned that they're higher than are, are being shared, a vaccine that isn't really very effective in stopping serious disease in the healthy population because the healthy population doesn't get very serious disease from COVID. 
But you acknowledge that it's saved uh, a lot of lives, uh, people being vaccinated, I, as opposed to where we, where we would be if, if we hadn't gone down that route. Absolutely acknowledge that it has saved lives of the elderly, the vulnerable, those who are immunocompromised, got severe comorbid disease uh, in that population and has made a significant difference, together with the improved care in hospital and the other treatments that have been made available. Good to talk to you, Doctor. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Bye.